There really is never a dull moment when it comes to Manchester United. Unfortunately, for the last few years, it's not been the sort of moments that we as fans would have wanted. But on Wednesday night, we got one. A dominant win against Spurs. I did not expect to see a, a level of completeness to a performance like that for a good few more months. But instead, we've got it within 10 games in the Premier League. It's a real glimpse as to where Ten Hag wants his team to be. And now we've got Chelsea on Sunday. Saturday, sorry. Chelsea away and Spurs at home. It's a tough week. I said four points would have been a great result. So I'm still going to stick to that. A draw will be good on Saturday. But sod it. Let's go for the win. I'm going to run through my predicted 11, the conversations and the talking points of Ten Hag ahead of the game. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. If you're not part of the community, what are you missing out? What are you doing? You're missing out on a cracking community. You really, really are. But in terms of early team news, well, there's one bit of team news I don't really need to tell you about, but I will tell you about anyway. Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo, sorry, will play no part in the game on Saturday. He won't travel with the squad. I don't think he would have started anyway. And we saw what sort of team we can be without Ronaldo. We pressed. It was it was a, it was almost demonic the level of pressing. The intensity of it was 100 miles an hour against uh, Spurs. I question whether we'll do that away. At Stamford Bridge, though. Let's run through the starting 11 that we we had against Spurs. And we all know how brilliant we played. If I'm looking at man of the match, there was only two real outstanding... I'll be honest, there were so many players who played that well, they could have been said man of the match. But I would have gone for Bruno, and I would have gone for Fred. They would have been my two men of the match. In terms of defensively, uh, I mean, I personally don't think that changed. That's an arrow. That's annoying. That's supposed to be a circle. I've really got to get used to this system. But look, that back four, I don't think it changes whatsoever. I think if you're looking at how Manchester United are playing at the moment, how crucial are these two lads? They really are. I think we've got five clean sheets in seven games that they have started together. It's fantastic. Man United genuinely have a centre-back partnership that I can have a bit of faith and confidence in. And it genu it's been a long old time since we've been able to say that truthfully as United fans. They will start against Chelsea. And I think Delow and Shaw will keep their positions as well. And I think Man United have been play, played so well against Spurs that no one really had a conversation too much about Shaw and about Delow. I spoke about them in my post-match reaction. Uh, genuinely, you could have had a, a, an argument for them to be man of the match if you really wanted to, and you really wanted to argue it. And I don't see why any of that back five gets changed against Chelsea. I think Delow, he's going to be needed for that link-up play down the wing there. He's going to have to cover that space, and we're going to have to cover this space down here. Because I imagine against Chelsea, we might operate a bit of a different style of play and a little bit of a different system to what we did against Spurs. Because I don't think that we'll be able to demand of the players to do the same thing again. It's just what my gut instinct is telling me. And that is why I think there's a conversation to be had around Fred and Ericsson. Let's get to the tactics board and let's have that discussion. Fred was, uh, he was absolutely outstanding, really, against Spurs. And there's no other way to describe it. He was here, he was there, he was there, he was there, he was there. He was, he was everywhere. Circles galore. Fred was an absolute monster against Spurs. And that's because Fred is one of the best in terms of an intensive, high-press system. If Manchester United have an intention of every single game of trying to win the ball back in these sorts of areas, you want Fred in, in your team every week. The thing is, I don't know whether we'll be doing that in this game. And that's where we're going to have a conversation about Ericsson. Because I would imagine Eric Ten Hag will make this decision. Not because Fred, I mean, Fred played an absolute stormer, but because I think we'll go with a slightly different start of play and a slightly different trio in midfield of Ericsson, Casemiro and Bruno, who, as far as all of us are concerned, really, have been the best trio for Manchester United so far this season. Uh, but the best performances of Fred and the best performance of probably Casemiro and the best performance of Bruno kind of came against Spurs when we operated a different style of football. Casemiro in that... I feel like Casemiro as well. I love Casemiro. I knew I'd love Casemiro. But it felt like he was really operating as a proper defensive midfielder against Spurs. He was winning the ball backs in these positions. He didn't particularly need to drift from that area of the pitch. Everybody, he kind of seemed to know his role. With Ericsson, I think it changes. Ericsson, we need him to be finding those... We, we Basically, I imagine against Chelsea, 
We'll have Ericsson coming in for Fred and we'll have Manchester United operating with a slightly less intense style of play. I think we'll allow Chelsea to come on to us. I think we'll try and hit on the counter-attack. I think that's why Ericsson playing over Fred is really important because I imagine Ericsson will pick the ball up in these situations and give those sorts of passes out to Anthony, down to Sancho or through to Rashford or Bruno to sort of relieve the pressure on Manchester United. And that is where, unequivocally, Ericsson is a better choice than Fred. And this is what it is about a squad. You have a squad so you can play different styles against different teams in different scenarios. And I don't personally feel that Man United going gun-ho again, like we did against Spurs, is the best option away at Stamford Bridge on Saturday night. I imagine we've got the confidence in our defence to sit there and we sit tight. We've got Casemiro, so we know that we can protect that defence. Casemiro can operate in this role here. And I think we need to get the ball to Ericsson in those positions and allow him to dictate from deep. I imagine that's what we'll be doing. And that's why, in my opinion, I think we'll see Ericsson coming in for Fred. And as I said, it's not a slight on Fred as a footballer. I think he played absolutely magnificent. It's about a slight nuance in the style. And that's why I would put Ericsson in over Fred. But let's move on to the strikers, or the attackers, sorry. And let's have a conversation about Jadon Sancho. Jadon Sancho is a player who right now isn't in the absolute best of form. But I'll tell you what, I thought this was quite an interesting stat. This is the key passes by expected assists against Tottenham Hotspur. You can see Bruno Fernandes over there by far and away the most productive player in that game. But look at that. I found that quite interesting. Jadon Sancho there with five key passes. Now, Jadon Sancho, I think, by, no, by his own admission, isn't playing with the confidence that we saw against Liverpool, that we expected from the Bundesliga Sancho and what we're seeing at the moment. He's not taking his man on. But I think, judging by this, judging by the numbers that he's still delivering, I think Ten Hag will keep him in the team. For Chelsea. You can let me know what you think about that. But also, part of that is the fact that Ronaldo's not part of the squad. We don't know whether or not Anthony Martial is going to be fit. Now, Eric Ten Hag will have his press conference this afternoon. If he's 100% fully fit, then there's a conversation to be had here about Sancho dropping down to the bench, Rashford coming to what I consider his most natural position on the left, and Martial going through the middle. There's an absolute conversation to be had about that. But as far as we know, Martial's not fit. So if he's not fit, I would keep Sancho on the left-hand side and I would keep Rashford through the middle. Well, I kind of what choice do we have? Even if you don't want to have Rashford through the middle. And I think that would be slightly unfair. Rashford again against Spurs did all the hard work, got himself into the positions, made the right runs, made the right decisions and got himself into goal-scoring positions. But it's that finishing. It's that lack of finesse, isn't it? It's how I play FIFA. My mate accuse me all the time. I just absolutely twat balls. I don't ever finesse it into the corner. And he gets furious at me. Clear and big up. I know you're watching, but big up. That's kind of what Rashford needs. He just needs that take that intake of breath, look at the goal, find your corners. That's all Rashford's got to do. It's quite a... I say it's a small thing. They, they call scoring goals the hardest thing in football. And I think we're seeing that at the moment. Rashford's doing all the right stuff, making all the right runs. And I think that, as a front three, it's going to be kept. And Anthony, right? Let's speak about Anthony. I'm really enjoying how Anthony is settling in at Manchester United. There's still so much more that he will need to learn. He'll need to improve. Yes, and I think he needs to learn about going on. He doesn't need to learn about going on the outside. He needs to understand. Use that. Go on the outside more. Don't make yourself that predictable. Iron Robin was the king of the predictability, but it's a rarity. Maybe he can do what Iron Robin did and just have a whole career of just cutting in on his left foot and being unstoppable. That'll be, that'll be fantastic. But I think to add a little bit of dy dynamism to his game, I imagine Eric Ten Hag is, and he's already said it in interviews, he knows that Anthony, instead of just cutting inside here, Anthony can go on the outside and get that cross in, the cutback. It's not always just about getting into this position and trying to fire a cross in. And that's what I want to see from Anthony. But I personally feel that we will sit a little bit deeper and we'll try and explode on the counter-attack. Certainly in the first 45 minutes away. Uh, in away games of this magnitude, the main idea is to not concede in the first 20, 25 minutes. Don't let the crowd get on top of you. And that's why I think we will see Ericsson come in the team over Fred. Maybe towards the last 20, 30 minutes, someone like Fred comes in, changes that. We start pressing with high intensity. Then we win the ball higher up the pitch, a bit of game management. That's what I think we'll see on Saturday. I think 
Ericsson will come in for Fred. I think the back five will stay the same. I think the front four will stay the same. So 10 out of 11 that started against Spurs. And Ten Hag's shown he likes to keep things the same if it's working. And it worked against Spurs. I just think a slight tweak in the, in the actual approach. And then energy-wise, I'm not sure if this United team will be capable of playing that level of performance against Spurs in three days later, doing it the same thing against Chelsea. I might be wrong. It might be the same starting 11. But you can let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV because you know I'll be here tomorrow with my match reaction, hopefully after three points. Imagine we get six points from Spurs at home and Chelsea away. Come on, United. Do it again. Do it again.